If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. Hello and welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. Excuse me. I'm your host, Maria Goldstein. Join us for the next half hour. I promise that this program will encourage, enlighten, and inspire you. You know, the Bible tells us that John the Baptist was a voice in the wilderness calling to his generation to repent. Repent simply means to, ch to turn around, to change your way of thinking. Our own generation is in trouble. We too need to change our conduct. At a national and international level, we're plagued with wars, rumors of wars, terrorism, drugs, divorce, the breakdown of the family, and numerous other societal ills. Yet we believe that each of us can change for the better. We can live our lives by a higher standard and influence our families, our communities, and the world. My guest today, joining me for the second, uh, for part two of her spectacular teaching on the, on the divine supernatural, is Dr. Murray Chapian. She is an award-winning author, a dynamic speaker and teacher, and a mighty woman of God. Welcome back, Dr. Chapian. Thank you, and call me Marie. Oh, yes, that's right, Marie. <laughs> well, by now we're good friends, that's sorry, because right. you, you've been here on our program twice, yes. and it has been such a pleasure and an, and an honor to have you here. And uh, the last uh, shows we talked uh, about some of your books. You've written many, but uh, we, we were just uh, mentioning angels in our lives, which hopefully we'll get a chance to talk, talk more about angels in our lives. And then we talked about telling yourself the, the, the truth, which is a great book, used as a textbook at, in university, uh, universities, and it deals with uh, healing uh, on an emotional level. Yes. And mm -hmm. then you're also inspire and uh, children. You yes. write very um, inspiring books for children. And this one, Harold and I. Yes. Okay, and I, I think uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more of this book, if you don't mind. All right. Okay. Yes. So um, why don't we go and get into it? Because okay. I know you know how fast a half hour goes, oh. so I, I know we want to cover a lot today. Okay. So, yes. So uh, talk to us a little bit about your, uh, your children's books. All right. Well, Harold and I <clears throat> is a story of a, an 11-year-old girl and her guardian angel, and I illustrated it as well. It was you're an artist too, oh my <laughs> little drawings, you know. But um, uh, she meets her guardian angel. She comes from a dysfunctional home, and a lot of it is just a tiny bit autobiographical. Okay. <laughs> and um, she uh, meets her guardian angel, and she asks him, Can, "Do you have a name?" You know. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, what do you think my name is? You know, we can talk to our angels, yes. but we talk to our angels with permission from God. Okay. So anyway, she calls him Harold because that's the only name she ever thought. An angel would be Hark the Herald, mm -hmm. angels sing. And it's her story, and it's an adventure story for children, as well as... Um, you know, understanding that we do really, each of us, have guardian angels. You know, children, mm -hmm. it's so amazing. I have this friend who um, had a Bible study in her home, and she has a very hyperactive little boy. So for every Bible study, because he would have to sit there with in the, in the Bible study, she had to ply him with toys and mm -hmm. things, you know, puzzles and sure. coloring things to keep him interested. Mm -hmm. And this one day, he sat the whole time absolutely transfixed, did not move, did not touch a single crayon mm. or anything. And afterwards, after the Bible study, when everybody went home, he said, boy, Mom, that angel was really something, wasn't okay. he? And she said, well, what angel? He said, the angel sitting in the, in the middle of the room. You were there. Wow. She said, oh. She said, what did he look like? And he says, why do you ask me? You were there. <laughs> <laughs> children, yes. uh, children sort of automatically um, move into the reality of God. Yes. They, they move into, they haven't yet been taught, mm -hmm. you know, they haven't yet been damaged yes. to the point where they say, well, why do bad things happen to good people? Right. You know, but some do, some do because bad things have happened to them. But God is very, very, very close, very, very close to children, mm -hmm. how he loves them and how he tells us that in the Bible. You yes. know, Jesus has said, you hurt a child, you're in big, big trouble. Yes. Be yes. better if you, you know, had a weight on you and you Absolutely. were buried in the, yeah. you know, drowned because that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. But 
children. I'm always uh, always hearing stories. They will write to me, you know, they've read my books and they will talk to me about their angels, you yes. know, and they will uh, tell me these stories. And the Holy Spirit will fall on a group of children, yes. you know, um, and they will, for example, there was this group of children in China who the uh, Holy Spirit fell on yes. all at once and they began to preach yes. these little ones five years old, ten years old, yes. on the streets they were preaching, telling people yes. to come to God. Absolutely. Don't lead your life on your own strength. Right. Don't go on anymore um, without the power of God in your yes. life. Little children, well, where were the big, the tall people? <laughs> right, right, right. Where were the adults? Right. I've, I've heard those kind of, yeah. kinds of stories. In fact, one of our uh, guests, he's from India, Pastor Sam, he have these um, like camps, children uh, camps for children. The same thing that you're saying that the Holy Spirit just fell on all these children, and they were just praising and singing yes. and just uh, yes, they never the, get over yes, it. Right, right. They never get over it. That changes their little lives. It changes them. And when we say the Holy Spirit, I was going to ask you what, yeah. what that meant. Let's the, explain that. That's that's good. What that means is that the the presence of God. Yes. The, the intangible, invisible presence of God comes to us and he will come to us as a group or uh, a lot of times when we're fellowshipping with one another and we're having our time of worship and 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 all it's just magnificent what mm -hmm. happens. We mm -hmm. just seem to be almost lifted up. <laughs> mm -hmm. above ourselves. you know we're just uh, in, a, in, a, in an awareness of the presence. Of God, and that's that's I think. Do you think that's a good explanation? I, I think it. I think it's a very good explanation. Yeah. And and then also when uh, Jesus died, he rose again. He he told the apostles that he was going to send his, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here with us now, with us and in us, a, with us and in us. That's yes. what's so miraculous right. that our human spirits are fused with the. Holy Spirit, the actual Spirit the that Spirit raised Christ from the dead. Yes, that hovered over the over the void when the earth was uh, uh, formed, when God created everything with a word. Yes, yes, with a word humming. You know, it's vibration. Yes. That's yes. that that word hovering means vibration. And uh, scientists say all sound, all matter is vibration. Yes. So we're living in a in a realm, you know, that is limited to our five senses, yes. and and uh, uh, physically we're right. limited. I want to continue in in this uh, in the same vein, same conversation. But before we do this, just so our audience that because we're just continuing, like if you know, but a, a lot of our audience might have not have seen oh, our passion, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're going to say, "What are they talking about?" Yeah, you know? yeah, right. So if you can please recap, because we were talking about the supernatural yes. and uh, and the divine supernatural. So if you can just recap the things that you think are most important, just so then our audience could follow. Okay. in the rest of our conversation. Good, good, good idea. Well, we first of all started talking about the difference. Uh, is there a difference in, in spirituality? You know, is, is it all the same? And, and um, we discussed, no, it is not all the same. There is God and there is the enemy of God. The enemy of God is a liar and he's a deceiver and, uh, and he hates people. So he will deceive us in any way that he can, whereas God loves us, for God so loved the world. Oh, I have called you with an everlasting love, with loving kindness I have drawn you, he says, Jeremiah 31, 3. So there's that difference that we have to know. The loving God, the God who created heaven and earth is the one and sent Jesus to us is the one we worship. That's the spiritual realm we want to be sure we stay in. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. the first thing. And then we talked about body, soul, and spirit. And we talked about the fact that our lives were not meant to be controlled by our souls. Mm -hmm. Our souls are our emotions, our intellect, and our will. Mm -hmm. Our bodies and our lives were meant really to be under the authority of the spirit mm -hmm. within us. 
Yes. And I know so many people whose human spirit hasn't been beautified yes. by the Spirit of God. Yes. And they live with a kind of impoverished spirit. And therefore, their souls are, can be damaged yes. and stay damaged. When we get hurt, for example, hurt feelings, I'll never get hurt again. You know, mm -hmm. I've been right. hurt once and I'll right. never be hurt again. Nobody's ever going to hurt me again. Right. Now, that's a soul statement. Mm -hmm. That's somebody who's, that's a statement that's locked in the soul realm. Now, if the Holy Spirit moves in, in that situation, mm -hmm. really deep hurt, mm -hmm. and we've been hurt. We yes. are a hurt people. I've been hurt. You've been hurt. We have been hurt. You listening, you've been hurt. You know, mm -hmm. we've been hurt. And so how does that work then with the Holy Spirit? It works like this. Though I've been hurt, in the name of Jesus, I'm not defeated. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, and I choose to be free from the negative tentacles of being hurt, mm -hmm. of being crushed, of being betrayed, mm -hmm. of being lied to, of being cheated, of being abused, mm -hmm. both physically and, um, and verbally in every way, of being lied to, of being robbed. I will not let the tentacles of this hurt destroy me or crush me in the name above all names. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of me. I will rise up above this. Mm -hmm. See, it's, and it's, a hard, yes. it's work. Yes. It's work. So I like with how you describe that as uh, the language of God, oh. right, when you, were, when you were saying that. And that, of course, comes from the, the book. Word the Word. Of God. The Word. Yes. 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 So we, what you're saying, I believe, is that we need to really learn the Word of God so that we can um, uh, satisfy our souls so that we can be transformed. Absolutely. That's so well said. Satisfied soul. Mm -hmm. A soul that is at peace, that is dominated by the Holy Spirit. I want to soak myself in yes. the Holy Spirit. I want to soak, you know, the personality, the human personality, wants, desires, needs, fears, longings. Um, uh, um, those fears of what's going to happen to me, what's happening right. in the world. I, that All those fears are in the soul realm. Our mm -hmm. problems, right. usually most of our problems right. are in the soul, in the soul realm. realm. And our bodies will respond yes. Yes. to what we are doing in our souls. Your body responds yes. to that, you know. We have, I, I often will hold, a, I've held a seminar even here on the effects of uh, wrong thinking and how it affects our bodies. Mm. For example, um, what does fear do to the liver? Mm -hmm. What right. does anxiety do, right. you know, to the skin? Right. What does um, what does anger do to our bones? Yes. You know, what problems kind of relate to soul, soul. realm right. Right. hanging on and not letting the Holy Spirit fill? That's awesome. So then then, uh, then we have to kind of make the the connection between the uh, the spirit, soul, and the body because the body is the temple, the temple. And so many people, unfortunately, we neglect the body. They don't, you know, they they don't understand how important the body is. But I love what you say that you that you carry heaven in in, in the temple. Yes, yes. I love that. Yes, <laughs> when we belong to God, we are connected to heaven. We live with heaven within us. Heaven lives in us. Oh, how I wish we could get a hold of that. Yes. There is no suffering in heaven. There is yes. no pain in heaven. Yes. We have heaven within us, and we speak this into ourselves. Yes. I speak the presence of God into right. people as I pray for them right. and into, into my own life. Yes. Right. Amen. And th I think this message, Marie, is so important for our times now because, as I said, you know, th this uh, Voices in the Wilderness, we have the messengers. Oh, yeah. And you're a messenger mm -hmm. and with this important message of, of the divine supernatural and how to live. Because, to be honest with you, Marie, I don't understand how you could live without it because we've got the wars, the rumors of wars, uh, you know, the terrorism, we've got all of this other stuff going on. How how can people function without this living in a, in a different reality like this? Living with the power of the, the will. The power. Only the power of the will. I can do this. And, you know, positive thinking. Uh -huh. and, and even, 
even some of the new age teachers, you know, who will tell you to grab hold of, you know, all of the goodness within you. There mm -hmm. is just nothing, there is no evil, there is only goodness within you. Those kinds of thinking, you see, that kind of, that kind of teaching all sounds wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, it sounds, and a lot of it, some of it is actually based on truth. Absolutely. But without the power of God, we're doing it in the soul realm. Yes. And people can succeed in the soul yes, realm. Yes, very well. You can make well money, so. yeah, you absolutely. can do good things, you can build good things, you can help the world, you can bring... Very, be uh, very good people. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. In the soul realm. In the soul, realm. absolutely. But you see, it's the soul that dies. Yes. The soul dies. When we die, our personality dies, unless we have the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And then you go on forever. We, I, I also wonder if we really realize, Maria, that we are eternal beings. Yeah. We are eternal beings. You will always be Maria. Right. I will always be Marie. Right. right. You know, I'm not going to wake up after I die in heaven as right. Margaret or something. Right. I mean, exactly. I will always be me. Right. And, and so I want to develop the best of me that I can right. in this life. Right. And I think that that's important to know. But how do you get this this knowledge, this this wisdom that you're talking about, unless you read the book? Read because, the book because it's all in the book. In the book, it's all in the book. Joshua says in um, Joshua one eight, this book of the law mm. will not depart out of my mouth. I will meditate in it day and night, and then. I will, I will make my way prosperous, and then I will have good success. Yes. And it says to us in the book of James, Beloved, I pray that you prosper mm -hmm. as your soul prospers. Well, how are we going to prosper when our souls are damaged and wounded and empty right. Right. and pressing, when our souls are trying to run things, my will? You know, I'm going to go on a diet. Boy, I'm just not going to eat uh, whatever, you know, I'm not going to eat the stuff I, I really like, like, say, it's ugly stuff, you know, you know, like ice cream with fudge on it. <laughs> I'm not going to eat ice cream with fudge on it. Uh, mm, and you see the ice cream with fudge and you say, well, tomorrow I'm not eating <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> see, I'm trying to go on my will, my will, my will. I'm not letting... I'm not letting the power of God show me how to eat. You know, maybe it's okay to have some ice cream with sure. fudge here and there. You know, maybe sure. it's okay. Maybe he's saying enjoy a little bit here or there. Sure. But let me, let that healthy, let me by my spirit create a healthy soul in you so that your body rises up strong. Do you know that Joshua, when he took over Moses' job, he was in his 80s? Yes. You know, we can't, we've got to stop being afraid of getting old. That's right. You know, Moses was in his 80s crossing the, um, the desert. Yes. Uh, Hannah was old. Uh, um, Elizabeth was old That's when right. she had John the Baptist. Right. They were right. old. Sarah? They were grandpappies. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah was 90. I know, yeah. When she got pregnant. See, this is the thing. This is the thing, Maria, that I'm so convicted about is living in the impossible. Yes. You know, and believing for the impossible. You know, we're praying for a family member who looks totally impossible. They will never shape yes. up. You know, they will never get their life together. Ha, ah, yum, that's a yes. yummy, yum, yum one, because it looks impossible, yes. see? Yes. Then we get to contend. Yes. I like to contend. <laughs> right. I like to say in the name of Jesus, right. this is how it's going to be, because it says so in the Word. And that's just what you were saying. You yes. need to know what, the word, know what the word says. Ask and you receive. Right. We need to understand. Pray without ceasing. We need to understand the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. much. We right. need to know the Word so we know how to pray. Amen. Amen. You said something here that uh, I just would like for you to, to talk a little bit about more about. And when we pray for a loved one. Yes. Um, you know, Marie, right now, I, I'm sure that somebody's watching that might have um, a loved one that they're praying for. Or they, you know, I mean, everybody has somebody like that, that they, they see them as hopeless or um, Talk to them. What, what would you like to say to? How can you help that that person that really is crying out for their loved one? 
It's so important to know, first of all, that God hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. He loves your prayers. Your prayers are beautiful to him. He loves your heart and the fact that you care about these, the person that you're, that's on your heart right now. He hears you and he is answering you and you can pray as if it is a done deal. You can just start saying, thank you for answering this prayer. And you know what really kind of does us in is when we have a time uh, we have a time limit on it, you know, do it now. Mm -hmm. I have prayers that I have been praying for for maybe 20 years, and I still have as much conviction and <laughs> as much peace that it's a done deal, because you know why? I know the heart of God. Yes. I know His heart. Right. And I know what He wants. He wants the same thing we do. So we're really kind of joining. Mm -hmm. And I continue to pray. There are people who have said, you know, once you've prayed, you don't need to pray anymore. But I do. I continue to pray and bless them and say, thank you, Lord, for answering this. Thank you. And another thing I would say is ask God for a sign. Ask him to just give you a, a sweet little knowing. Mm -hmm. I was praying for, for example, I was praying for someone, a dear one in my family, who just seems like, they're just so antagonistic toward anything, you know, that has to do with the Lord. They've been wounded. Mm -hmm. And um, and the Lord, one day as I was praying for this beloved uh, family member, the Lord showed me in a vision in my head, not on the mm -hmm. wall, pictures right. on the wall. I, I'm a visionary, so I do see pictures on the mm -hmm. wall from the Lord, but uh, mostly it's in inside, inside. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely from God. If anyone tells you that it's your imagination that you're hearing from God, mm -hmm. then you certainly <laughs> do have a divine imagination. <laughs> but um, uh, all of a sudden I saw that person in heaven. Mm -hmm. I saw them playing by a stream, and I knew it was a done deal, that mm -hmm. one day... So you they, have that knowing. I that have that you. absolute conviction. So I want to pray that for you. Father, let that be a, a sign, you know, for everyone who is watching, praying for somebody, mm -hmm. that God will give them an assurance within. It's yes. a done deal. Because the Word tells us that. Yes, yes. Ask and you receive. Right, right. And He loves our families, and He put us in our families yes. for a reason. Amen, amen. That's awesome. That's awesome because I think that um, these are times that are, I mean things are going to change. I really believe in the atmosphere that God is working in, and He's oh, going to be working in a miraculous oh, way, and oh, we're going to see such signs and wonders, oh, Marie. It's happening. It's happening. It's, it's happening. happening everywhere, yes. all over the world. People who dare to step in to what God is doing. See, it's a daring to step in. Sometimes you seem a little weird. Well, we are a little weird. I mean, you know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you dare to step in to what God is, God is doing. Father, we pray, show me mm -hmm. who I am. What, what is my identity in this time? Yes. And this is something that you talk about, is the identity. Right. We have to have an identity in God. We have to know who we are. Yes, who, Be are we? Yeah. who am I, who, in your that's right. opinion? That's right. right. And I think that's kind of an important thing to, to know who we are in order to walk in this supernatural Absolutely. realm. Yes, who am I in God's eyes? Yes. This, that's what I pray to him. Right. How do you see me, Lord? Right. What is your, you know, who am I in heaven's right. eyes? Right. Not mine, mm -hmm. not the world. Right. And then once you get that identity clear, how precious. Yes. And I know that in our last program, we were talking about faith. Without faith, it's impossible to, to please God. Yes. So that's another secret of the kingdom is to have that faith. And when we know the word, I like that scripture that says, I am fully persuaded. Oh, that that his promises are true. I am fully, I mean, I know, I'm convinced of it. So when we know our identity, then that's when your, your kind of living happens when you walk in the supernatural, that's in right. the divine supernatural. That's right. And it isn't that everything suddenly becomes oh, no. easy. No, 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 no. <laughs> we have no problems, do we? No, no, no. I have to send away. I have to go online and order some. Uh, yeah, no. But it's a different way of looking at them. Yes. Yes, and, and I, I like too. The scripture says, "My afflictions are short and temporary." So I, you know, it's. I think too that our afflictions, maybe it's the way we're viewing at them, but they don't seem as. It seems like now we know who who is the helper. That's right. Did you know that there's more in the Bible about endurance, endurance. than there is about intimacy with God? Yes. 
Isn't That's, that amazing? That is amazing. And I'm sure you can do a whole teaching on that. Really? Because these are, these are the, some of the elements that you were talking about in, in one of the class, the elements of, of, of healing and yes. the, the endurance. And yes. that's so awesome. Yes. Now, yes. Um, the difference between religion and relationship, Marie, talk about that. Oh, religion is so easy. Okay. You just do a lot of stuff. You just, you know, you just do everything right. Uh, with religion, we have our religious rituals, not our sanctified sacraments. There's a big difference between, say, the sacrament of, of, of communion, you know, and just having to wear a certain thing to church, right. you know, or doing it this way. Religion is usually a, a bunch of stuff to do, to put it. Which really is not bad. I mean, there's, religion does a good thing, but, but relationship, that is you know what yeah. St. Augustine said? He said, love God love. and do as you please. <laughs> okay. And, and that gives us a, a, such a sense of respect that all of those things, I have things I do out of so much love for him. Yes. And it is yes. hard stuff. Yes. It is going over the top out of just love for him, just yes. to give him a little bit more of me yes, and of yes. my work and etc. Right. Um, and it's it's such a joy. But it's not because the book says I've got the I've got the rules to belong to this religion right. and it says I have to do this on this day yes. and this on this you know. Um, but then I'm not also saying anything against certain religions that have certain traditions right, because right. there is something very beautiful. beautiful. Right, but I think what, what you're saying is when you do it because you love God, yeah. when you have that personal relationship, that changes everything. One sentence that you want to leave our, our audience with, just one sentence. Oh, <laughs> one sorry. sentence, love God. love God. Love God, children. That's what Father Juna Perecero said when, um, when the, the, the people came at him to kill mm. him. He opened love his God. arms and he said, love God. And that's a beautiful um, last uh, sentence to end out. Love God. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, love you. And I love you too. <laughs> and thank you, our viewing audience, for joining us today. If you want more information, please contact me at marigold1 at comcast.net. Your uh, website, quickly. www.mariechapian.com. Thank you. Until mm -hmm. next time, I wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. Thank you. <laughs> what fun.